950. Real Texas, real talk. KPRC Houston, an iHeart radio station. Yesterday evening, uh, that Politico had uh, put out this story that they got their hands on, I think it's like 92 pages of Samuel Alito opinion on Roe versus Wade and that the Supreme Court was going to vote five to four in favor of, of getting rid of Roe v. Wade, which has been the nation's law for 50 years. Now, there are plenty of people from a legal standpoint who think they got it wrong, the Supreme Court got wrong 50 years ago, and that it's it's good that it's going away. But the timing on all this, you know, obviously there's a lot of political reasons why this got released when it did. And this has not really happened before. But uh, before we bring our guest on, uh, to talk about it with us, his name is Rob Crane. He's a legal expert here in Texas at CBRLawFirm.com. Before we bring him on, uh, we'll let him take a listen to Senator Mike Lee last night. As the news broke, here's what he said. This is bittersweet. On the one hand, it's, it's sweet because we're finally vindicating the Constitution and the, the, the babies who have been unprotected by the law because... The Supreme Court of the United States has told states that they may not protect unborn human life. Uh, that's the sweet part. The, the, the bitter part is the way this was leaked. This was an utter disgrace in terms of how it was released. This entire kerf- kerfuffle has been brought about as a result of an unscrupulous person trying to subvert 235 years of tradition. Uh, try to subvert the way the Supreme Court operates. As a law clerk to Justice Alito, I've never been more proud to have worked for him. And I, I, I'm uh, saddened by the fact that his work was released without authorization prior to his time of release, specifically for the purpose of threatening, intimidating, and harassing those justices inclined to go along with what appears to be the majority opinion. Okay, so is this an attempt? Like, a, Is this like a Hail Mary? Is this an attempt to try to change... A couple of justices votes on this because it's not official until it gets announced by the Supreme Court. Joining us, Rob Crane, legal expert at CBRLawFirm.com. What do you think, Rob? Is this a Hail Mary? Well, we all need to be careful here this morning. I've been listening to both sides, um, and there's so many passionate issues and opinions on on this topic. We don't know who leaked it. We don't know what their motivations were. The obvious um, leap that I think all of our brains want to take is that somebody who's opposed to this decision is the one that leaked it. But we don't know this at at this point. Um, Within the hour, the chief justice of the Supreme Court has issued a statement, again, another unprecedented event in the last 24 hours, and he has asked the marshals to fully investigate this leak. And my guess is under today's technology and circumstances, they will find the person who leaked this. That being the case, Rob, what happens to them? What what sort of law have they broken, and how can they be punished potentially? No, that's a great question, um, and I've been trying to research that today, and, and I've not seen a whole lot of commentators make comment on that. So I don't know whether or not these are going to be uh, criminal violations, whether or not these are violations within the institution of the Supreme Court, and obviously termination. Um, there have been precedents in the past of investigations of leaks, not of this nature, but of other types of leaks where they were attempting to file criminal charges, but it's yet to be seen exactly which charges might be might apply to this circumstance. So you, I don't have the best answer for you yet. That's one of those questions that okay. we're all unfolding. I get it. I get it. Um, here's what I wonder, too. How many people would have access to, to Justice Alito's uh, work on all this? I mean, we're talking about 92 pages worth of documents. There's not a whole lot of people who would be able to get their hands on that, are there? Well, within the structure of the Supreme Court, um, there are law clerks, uh, numerous law clerks for each of the justices, and they're obviously the the justices themselves and support staff. The exact number, I do not know, but this opinion was first drafted and circulated from reports in February of this year. So it's not as if this was just handed over to the other justices. It's been there now for uh, several months. And so the number of people who might have had their hands on it is larger than it would be if it had just been authored. Um, so it it could be any number of individuals. I mean, obviously, we're not talking, I wouldn't think any, you know, I would think less than 100. Um, but to, for us to know exactly how many people's hands or eyes could have had access to it, it's uh you know, it'd be dozens is would be my guess. 
Yeah, you know, it, it, I think the thing that kind of shocks everybody about this is that, you know, given the long-standing history of the United States Supreme Court, we've never had this happen before, have we? No, we have never had an opinion leaked. I mean, ironically, um, there appears to have been a leak um, prior to the issuance of the Roe v. Wade opinion, one of the few um, cases where a leak was suspected happened to be 49 years ago. Um, wow. and, but it was not the leak of a draft opinion. It was just a itemized detailing in a newspaper publication as to what was going on behind the scenes. So this is highly unprecedented. So you've got two major events happening at the same time. You have an unprecedented leak um, of a draft opinion, which has not happened in our history from the Supreme Court, number one. And number two, you've got one of the most significant precedents um, over the last 50 years, 49 years ago, that was decided on a 7-2 ruling and currently under the draft um, would potentially be decided under a 5-4 ruling. Um, when you don't typically have those kinds of monumental decisions overturned at the constitutional interpretation level on 5-4 opinions. So it's obviously a shaking um, of the system on two fronts, a leak and a precedent we all know, very few precedents most Americans know, but this is one of them. And to have it on uh, a 5-4 know- will be something yeah. that will be uh, unsettling as well. I know you're not real comfortable speculating, and I and I get that. I completely understand that. But you know, you, it, it is always interesting to try to figure out the motivation behind it. It could be, as I said, it could be a hail mary, where you're hoping, as you say, five to four would appear where the court lies, lays right now. If you can make one justice nervous enough to potentially change their vote, you can completely change the outcome of this case. That that seems like a pretty powerful motivation to me. It may, it, it, they're, they're, I, I think that's where we all go, is that somebody who's very uh, – this is an emotional decision, clearly. I, I don't think uh, – there may have been a, a lot of thought and given to it, but it's still – the origins are of an emotional decision um, for whoever leaked this for whatever their reasons may be. And, of course, that's where the speculation is now, that we leak this opinion and cause a stir in the public that then pressures – uh, whichever justice or justice is, we think might change their mind one way or the other. Um, so, yeah, that, that would be the obvious um, thought process. Um, but this is one where in America we are so divided left, right. We've got a 5-4 court here, 6-3, but a 5-4 potential decision. And really where we need to start talking in America is where is our common ground? And our common ground on this topic, if I can just say 10 seconds, is – we don't want people to be in a position to have to decide whether or not to have an abortion if they if, in an unwanted pregnancy. So let's do those things that we can do together on both sides of the issue, and that is to educate our young people, educate adults on how not to get in this position. And for those people who do take children to term, whose family life doesn't support a child, let's make our abortion, or excuse me, our adoption uh, processes more friendly. Um, so let's. You know, in a time like this, we need our adults like you standing up and finding the ground that will keep us more stable and solid as our Constitution survives and goes forward. You know, I completely agree with you, Rob. The only thing I would add to that, though, is that I think the thing that gets missed in all the hyperbole about um, uh, about this issue is that all this means is that the decision making on abortion goes back to the states. This does not ban abortion. People think that. That, it, that all of a sudden abortion across the country will become illegal. That, that's not the case. That's, that's absolutely correct. Um, you know, and, uh, interestingly, uh, Justice Thomas um, has been lamenting the dis- difference in laws that we have in various states on the topic of marijuana, where we, in one state it's perfectly legal and in other states it's perfectly illegal. Um, and we have a hodgepodge of of laws across the country, and depending on which side of a border you're falling on, you're dealing with different laws, and he's lamented that fact. That's what will likely happen here, is you will likely have um, conservative states um, outlawing it, um, or liberal states providing some access to it, and so it'll be probably a hodgepodge um, across the country in that respect, um, unless there is federal legislation which uh, um, essentially codifies Roe. Right, and there you go, and that that that's the answer. If the if the country wants that to be the law of the land, that's the job of Congress. All right, sir. Thank you. Good to talk to you as always. Appreciate it. Anytime.